One other thing about seasonality, you know, there's a good chance we're going to be up 20% for the year as of the end of October with a couple days to go here. November since 1950 has been higher seven of the last seven times that's happened. December up six of the last seven times. Right. Some really good out performance. So, yes, this has been a great year. Sometimes great years can continue stronger in the last couple of months, and that could be where we're looking at things once Although, again here. You know, Brent, all the year to date numbers, the S&P's performance, every, you know, stock that might be named, you got to take it with a grain of salt. I mean, we hit the market bottom, you know, a couple of days before the calendar happened to turn. You look at the 52 week highs for a lot of these names. It's a totally different story for, you know, the thing and, uh, and other companies, for instance. Um, what do you think is really going on here? So I really think that if we do hit new highs towards the end of the year, which we think we will, it's going to be driven by a different cast of characters. And so all this talk about market highs, they've really been driven by the defensives. So if you look from about October of last year, which is important because that's when Jerome Powell made people worried that he was going to psych, uh, hike the economy into recession, all the market highs have been defensive. Staples, utilities, REITs, minimum volatility stocks. If we're right and the Fed has pivoted, which now that's, we'll begin um, pushing into the economy because it takes with a lag, and the trade war comes off, I think the formula going forward is much different. It's more cyclicals, it's more value, it's even perhaps more global stocks since global LEI has actually shifted higher. And so new highs, but different players. So, Brian, basically you agree. I mean, we were having this discussion with Steve Leisman. He was saying there is a lag in terms of monetary policy and that all that easing that the Fed had been working on is eventually going to come out into the economy. And, and that's that's where you stand. So you're you're shifting more towards a cyclical tilt at this point. Yeah, I mean, certainly there's always a caveat about political uncertainty, but I do think it's an election year. and I think the president would like to get reelected. So a recession is something I don't think he'd want to push. And so that's the big caveat. But indeed, if you look, it's not just the Fed, it's other central banks. And so China was a country that was tightening policy coming into 2018. They got hit with surprise tariffs. Now they've been easing, and China's OECD LEI is actually ticking a bit higher. And so if those things continue to turn, which we think they will, then the narrative going forward is not defensive. It's probably more cyclical in nature because LEIs will shift higher and growth will improve. So you like small caps, values, value stocks, international, and, and also commodities at this point? Yeah, I mean, commodities are more so the inflation. If you look at the inflation component over the last year, while bond yields have gone down by 150 basis points, inflation hasn't moved. <laughs> a year ago today, core PCE was 1.86. Today, it's 1.77. And so at the end of the day, before a cycle ends, we do believe you have to have some sort of inflation with the Federal Reserve desiring to actually end the cycle. And right now, we do have a little bit of inflation, not much, but no central bank that wants to end it right now. And so inflation could tick higher before they do something, which indeed would probably lead to a commodity outperformance, especially if growth improves and the dollar weakens.